Today we'll recap a 2015 gothic romance film named Crimson Peak. Edith ignores her father's warning and marries Sir Thomas Sharp. When she arrives at the Sharp Mansion, she learns about her husband's secrets and realizes that the place is teeming with ghosts. Kindly remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like the video. At the beginning of the movie, we see a young lady named Edith, who says that ghosts are real. She first saw one when she was 10 years of age, and it was of her mom who passed on from a sickness called dark cholera. One night when she was attempting to rest in her room, she heard a few sounds. She sits on her bed and sees that a shadow was advancing toward her. Seeing this, she gets extremely frightened, and afterward, the spirit comes to her and advises her to be careful with the crimson peak. This spirit was of her mom, Edith begins screaming and that spirit vanishes from there. Edith then tells that she didn't hear that voice for a long time and didn't figure out that advance notice, and when she comprehended, it was too late. Now the film pushes ahead for teen years where Edith has grown up. Here she meets her childhood friend Alan, whom she tells that she has come to meet Ogilvy to see if he wants to publish her manuscript. Then she shows her content to Ogilvy who doesn't like her story since it is a ghost story. Edith then lets her father know that Ogilvy needed a romantic story, and she would rather not compose it. Here her father gifts her a pen which she truly likes, yet says she needs to type her content, and afterward she will submit it to the Atlantic Monthly. In the following scene, we see Edith composing in her father's office, where a man named Thomas Sharp comes and tells her that he has a meeting with Mr. Carter. Edith requests him to wait and begins leaving, however, Thomas sees her content and says that whoever composed it is very elegantly composed. Edith tells him that she has written it, to which Thomas tells her that where he came from, ghosts are not to be trifled with. All at once Mr. Carter comes there and welcomes him, and lets him know that Edith is his daughter. Now in the next scene, Thomas tells them about the scarlet clay that can be used to produce the strongest bricks and tiles. Then he shows them a model of a clay mining machine and only then Edith also joins them. Then Carter asks him whether he has tried it to which he says that he has come to get the funding for the same. Carter says that this venture of his has been dismissed in many countries before and he likewise will not support it. However, Thomas tells him that he is here with all that he has and asks him for an opportunity to show off his abilities. Then, we see Carter preparing to show up at a party and he requests that Edith go with him. He tells her that Thomas will be there as well. Here Edith asks him whether Thomas' proposal was actually awful to which he says that it isn't his proposal but there is something about him that he does not like. Yet, Edith says that she found Thomas exceptionally enthusiastic. After this, Alan comes there to get Carter and the two of them leave from there. Now after they leave, Edith begins perusing a few books in her room when the door of her room opens itself. Seeing this, she gets shocked, and when she comes to close the door, she sees the spirit of her mom standing before her, fearing that she closes the door. Then she asks her what she wants from her, and only then does her mom's spirit come inside and advises her to be careful with Crimson Peak. Edith gets terrified by this, and afterward, her maid Annie comes there and tells her that Thomas is outside and he needs to converse with her. Edith comes to meet him and Thomas tells her that he can't speak American, so he wants her to accompany him to the party. Edith goes with Thomas to the party where she introduces him to Alan. Alan says that he has heard a ton about him from his mom and sister. Thomas then introduces Edith to his sister Lucille Sharp. Then he requests Edith to dance and Lucille begins playing the piano, after which they begin dancing and everybody appreciates their performance. Next, we see Carter at his club where he meets a man named Holly. He asks him to get the information about Thomas and his sister, and he wants this as soon as possible. We then see Thomas and Lucille talking, where she says that she does not think Edith is the right choice as she is too young. Thomas asks her for her ring to which she says it is hers and needs it back. Then, Carter meets Holly who gives him a parcel and tells him not to open it here. After this, we see that Thomas is going to express something to Edith. However, all at once Carter comes there and lets him know that he needs to meet him and her sister in his study room. There he tells them that he has come to know their reality and he likewise realizes that he loves his daughter. He says that he can tell this to Edith, yet he gives him two choices. He gives them a check and advises them to discreetly return to England, or this evening he should completely make Edith extremely upset. Then Thomas announces during supper that he is returning to England with his sister tomorrow. Now Edith gets upset to hear this and leaves from there. 
Thomas pursues her and deliberately starts speaking such things to her which breaks her heart, on which she slaps him and leaves there. We then see Carter again in the club, where an unknown individual slams his head into the wash basin and kills him. On the other hand, Edith gets a letter from Thomas, which says that anything he said that day was told by her dad to say, and he also advised him to break her heart. After reading this, she quickly leaves for Thomas' hotel, yet subsequent to going there, she comes to know that he has already checked out in the morning. On hearing this, she gets upset and comes out, where she finds Thomas. He tells her that Lucille is gone and that her dad paid off him to leave. Then here the two of them talk about their thoughts with one another, and afterward, Carter's legal advisor Ferguson comes there. He informs her about her father's passing and requests that she identify the body. However, at that point, Alan comes there and stops Edith to see the body. Yet, she sees his face which was severely destroyed. Ferguson uncovers that Carter was alone and the floor was wet. Alan begins to examine further, but Edith stops him from doing as such. Then a scene of Carter's memorial service is shown where we see Lucille's ring on Edith's finger. Then Edith and Thomas come to England where he introduces his worker Finlay to Edith, who says that he knows that they are being married for some time. Edith is stunned to hear this, yet Thomas changes the point. All of a sudden a dog comes there which Edith loves a lot and she requests that Thomas keep it. Then he takes her inside the royal residence which is very extravagant and large. Yet, Thomas tells her that because of the downpour, its rooftop has broken and the floor is likewise getting harmed. Then he tells that his workshop is in the attic and he goes there. Now Edith removes her cap by going before the mirror when she sees a few dead flies there, and really at that time does she see a figure strolling behind her, which additionally calls out to her. She thinks it might be Lucille, so she goes to check on her where she sees a lady in the elevator. Then Thomas comes there and Edith lets him know that she saw a lady in the lift. Yet, Thomas says that this will be her deception. Then Luzelle also comes there and she lets them know that she had gone to the post office. Thomas is then taking Edith to her room when she asks Luzelle for the keys to the house. Yet she says she will require them since certain areas of the house are not safe. Edith is then in the bath when she sees a lady's shadow outside. Then she begins getting into her garments and we see that shadow moving toward her. However, when she turns, that spirit vanishes from that point. Now the following day, Edith wakes up and hears a piece of music, paying attention to which she comes to the first floor and sees that Lucille is playing the piano. Lucille tells her that when they were kids their mom used to play the piano, and here Edith sees a similar ring she is wearing in their mom's painting. On the other hand, Alan finds out Carter's checkbook from which he discovers that he had given the last check to Thomas, which makes him dubious of him. Next, Edith is strolling around the house and she arrives at Thomas' workstation, where they begin romancing. However, he hears a sound and afterward Lucille comes there with tea. She gives tea to Edith, yet we see that the two of them are not drinking. Now while dozing around evening time, Edith begins having pain in her stomach, because of which she awakens and sees that Thomas isn't on the bed. Then she arrives in a hallway looking for him, where she hears a sound from a cabinet. She feels that her dog has gone inside, but then she sees that the dog is outside and we see that spirit peeping from inside. She then opens the cabinet, inside which is kept a crate and inside it, she finds wax cylinder recordings. She puts it back and begins returning when she hears somebody's voice, and afterward, a spirit rises out of inside the floor and starts crawling towards her. Seeing this, she gets extremely terrified and begins running from that point. She enters the lift and incidentally enters the cellar. Here she sees a box with a nola composed on it. In the following scene, we see Thomas working with Finlay on his mining machine. Then Edith comes there and says that she needs to converse with him. She inquires as to whether anybody has passed on in this house. Thomas attempts to stay away from her inquiries and purposely gives his hand to the machine. Now when Edith is dressing his hand, Thomas tells her that the ore and the red clay leach up from the ground and stain the snow which turns it bright red. That's why people call this place Crimson Peak. Edith is shocked to hear this, because now she was remembering her mother's warning. On the other hand, Alan meets Ferguson who tells him that Edith has asked him to transfer all her assets to England. Then Alan lets him know that there is something about all this. The last check Carter made was to Thomas. Ferguson tells that before he died, Carter had recruited a man named Holly and he could be associated with this. Now Edith is dozing around evening time when she sees a dream, in which she sees a spirit that awakens her and dread and blood is emerging from her mouth. Then she sees that Thomas isn't on the bed, 
She gets up and asks Spirit to give her some sign of being there. And here we see the Spirit passing from behind. Then suddenly it holds her hand and drops her down. After which the sound of somebody screaming begins coming. Edith goes to the restroom where she sees the Spirit lying in the bathtub with a chopper punctured over her head. Then it out of nowhere gets up and begins moving towards her. Fearing that Edith begins running away and the Spirit advises her to leave now or his blood will be on her hands. Then she hears Thomas' voice and hurries to him. She lets him know that the lady is in the hall, but when he looks there is nobody there. She tells him that she knows what her identity is and she asks her to leave. However, Lucille says that it was only a bad dream and she was sleepwalking. Then Thomas says that tomorrow he will take her to the post office so she can get some fresh air. After this, Lucille asks Thomas how is it that she could be familiar with Mother, to which he says that he can't really understand. Lucille lets him know that she believes this should be over when she signs the paper. The following day they go to the post office, where a man lets her know that he has a few letters for her, out of which two are certified letters from her solicitor and another is from Milan, Italy. She says that she doesn't know anybody in Italy, and afterward, Thomas comes there and says that Storm is going to come so they need to leave. That's when a man says if he wants. They can remain there for the night. On the other hand, Alan takes Thomas' location from the hotel and meets Holly there. He gives him a document that contains a new section. He tells him that Thomas was already married and Carter had come to be familiar with this. For that reason, he would have rather not gone Edith married to him. Here Edith takes the name of Milan before Thomas, hearing which he begins thinking something. From that point forward, the two of them get intimate there for the first time. The following day they return home and Lucille asks her where she was the previous evening. She tells her that they spent the night in the depot, hearing which Lucille lashes out. However, abruptly turning the matter around, she says that she was worried for them. Then she picks up the food that has fallen on the table, and during this time she likewise sees Edith's letters. Edith says that she isn't feeling good, and Lucille begins making tea for her. Then Edith sees the keys lying on the table with Enola composed on it. She discreetly keeps that key with her. She then goes to the room and peruses the letters her lawyer has expounded on her resources move. Edith is going to sign the document when her eyes fall on the other letter. On opening it, it is uncovered that the letter was for Enola, then she comes to the cellar with the keys and opens the case in which Enola was composed. Inside she observed a gramophone and three parcels in which the names of three unique nations were composed, and they were the same countries from where Thomas Venture was dismissed, which were London, Edinburgh, and Milan. Then she hears some sound from a well there and when she opens it, there is red fluid inside it. She sees nothing and leaves from that point. However, after she leaves, we see a skeleton emerging from that fluid. On the other hand, Thomas lets Luzel know that his machine is working impeccably, and says that Edith will be exceptionally glad to see it. Now Luzel doesn't appear to be happy here and only then does she notices that the Enola key is absent from her keys. She comes to Edith where Edith tells her that she isn't feeling good and requests that she get cold water. Luzel intentionally puts her keys there, and when she goes to get water, Edith returns the key with Enola to her keys. She then gives her water, takes the keys, and leaves from that point. Glancing back at the key with Enola in it, she comprehends that Edith has now gained some knowledge. Then Edith pays attention to those tapes on the gramophone, from which she discovers that Thomas had previously three relationships, one of which was a woman named Enola. She also discovers that he used to wed every one of the ladies and take their cash to deal with his machine. She sees that the dog belongs to Enola. Enola tells in the tape that they are killing her by giving her a toxic substance in the tea. Now Edith is very shocked to know this and starts running from there. However, there was a strong storm outside, so she returns inside and blacks out there on the steps. Now when she wakes up the following morning, she sees Lucille before her who has brought her tea. She offers her tea yet Edith rejects it. Lucille then feeds her porridge and tells her that her dad broke her mom's leg, after which she used to lie on this bed, but she took care of her. She again attempts to make her drink tea, but at that point, Thomas comes there and Lucille leaves from there. Thomas tells her never to drink tea. Outside, Lucille lets Thomas know that Edith has figured out everything. So she has quit drinking tea. However, she has blended poison in the porridge. Hearing this, Thomas scolds her and requests that she stop all this. Lucille says if they stop it, she will be in prison and he will be hanged. Then we see that Edith is heaving blood. After which she is going to the hall when she hears the cry of a child. She sees through the spirit of Enola who is holding her child. Edith asks her what she needs from her to which Enola directs her aside. Now when Edith goes to that side, 
She tracks down a room there, inside which she sees that Thomas and Lucille are getting intimate. Edith gets a major shock subsequent to seeing this and she comes out of that room. Lucille also comes after her and she takes out that ring from her finger and pushes her from there. All at once, there is a thump on their entryway, and when Edith opens her eyes the following day, Alan is sitting before her. He tells her that he has given her a sedative to set her foot. She attempts to let Alan know that her mom's soul cautioned her to be careful with the crimson peak. He notices that there is no ring on her finger and she is not drinking tea. Then, when Lucille comes to him, he sees that the ring is on her finger. He tells the two of them that he wants some alone time with his patient and sends them out. He then lets her know that he has come here to take her away. Outside, Lucille gives a knife to Thomas and asks him to kill Alan. Here Alan is taking away Edith when Thomas and Lucille show up there. Alan says that she is showing signs of anemia so he is taking her to a hospital. He tells Lucille that he knows she has been poisoning her and then gives Edith a news cut out. He tells her that Lady Beatrice Sharp was killed in her bath. It is uncovered here that Thomas was 12 years of age then and his mom was killed by Lucille. Then Alan begins leaving with Edith, however, Lucille attacks him and stabs a knife under his arm and gets Edith. She then orders Thomas to kill Alan, but he does not want to kill him and asks him where he ought to wound him so he doesn't pass on. Then he stabs him and takes him to the cellar. He lets him know that Lucille has taken Edith to sign the paper and she will kill her when she signs it. Here Edith asks Lucille for what reason did she murder Enola's kid, to which she uncovers that it was really her kid. A long while back she became pregnant with Thomas and when her mom came to be aware of this, she killed her. Then to put resources into Thomas' invention, they caught three young ladies and got them married to him, and afterward, took their property and killed them. In any case, in each of the three events, Thomas' machine failed. Then she asked her to sign on the paper after which Edith signs on them. Here Edith asks who killed her dad, and here she reveals that she had killed her dad. Now Edith gets extremely angry subsequent to hearing this and attacks Lucille with a pen. Then she runs away from there and meets Thomas on the way. Thomas clarifies for her and requests her to trust him only once again. He requests that she go to Alan in the cellar and says that he will return with the paper. Then he goes into the room and burns those papers and tells Lucille that she won't touch Edith any longer. He attempts to persuade her that they can leave here and begin another life. He tells her that they can all live together. Hearing this, Lucille inquires as to whether he loves Edith, and when he says yes, she stabs him, and before he can say anything, she stabs him in the face. He removes the blade from his face with incredible trouble, after which he dies. Lucille then realizes her mistake and begins crying embracing him. Here Edith returns to searching for Thomas and sees Lucille furiously coming toward her to kill her. She makes a solid attempt to go after her, yet Edith some way or another figures out how to get away and arrives at Alan in the cellar. Now Lucille arrives there and takes out the chopper with which she killed her mom. Then Edith comes before her and takes her out after her. Outside, the two of them begin battling where Lucille says that she won't stop till she kills her. Then Edith begins requesting help, to which Lucille expresses that there is nobody there to help her. But she advises her to look back, and she sees Thomas' spirit standing behind her. Lucille gets emotional seeing Thomas, and taking advantage of the opportunity, Edith assaults her, after which she kills her. Then she goes to the spirit of Thomas which vanishes after a couple of seconds, and the film gets back to a similar place where it began. After this Alan and Edith begin leaving and Edith says that ghosts are real. There are things that attach them to a spot, yet there are others that hold on to an emotion. Then we see Lucille's spirit playing the piano and the film closes here. Thanks for watching.